As I pulled the stone free, a sigh of sepulchral air escaped the inner chamber. I was not prepared for what lay beyond this threshold. Post disposing of the sack-bound insectoid Zephon in his lair, the Elder God instructs to us not of our next brother to dispose of, but an unlikely and dark secret to uncover. In the mountains beyond the pillars, Nosgoth's cataclysms have exposed an ancient crime. Endowed with Zephon's soul, you may now progress where your path was hitherto impeded. Curious about said crime, we take a moment back at the Stonehenge near the Underworld to test out our new wall scaling abilities and find another health upgrade. After which, when returning to Cain's throne in the clan sanctuary, the wandering spirit of Ariel further guides. Like a corpse in a shallow grave, corruption rises to the surface. Beyond these pillars, the defiled victim mutely screams its outrage. Looking around Cain's throne room, we see perched above an orifice to enter. To our left, one of the structural pillars has been scratched and etched near Zephon's flag. No doubt, the scurrying sycophant's handiwork so he could get a better vantage point. Ascending to the top of the throne room, we head down the decorated hallway to a duo of doors. Through the door to our right, we then see a great waterfall and courtyard below, leading to a tunnel, as well as what appears to be the remains of a Dumahim. Gliding to the ground, we take inventory quickly, seeing the Dumahim guard lackadaisically patrol, as if not too interested in whatever they've been tasked to guard. Whatever the case, we enter the tunnel, carving a swath through our enemies. Exiting the other side of the passage, we recognize. The ancient tomb of the Seraphim, once impenetrably sealed, now ravaged by Nosgoth's upheavals, its mysteries lay exposed. In the time of Vorador, centuries before Cain was made, the Seraphim warrior priests waged a merciless war against the vampire tribes of Nosgoth. Emboldened by righteousness, they committed unspeakable and indiscriminate acts of violence, massacring fledglings and ancients alike. They decimated entire bloodlines in mere decades. Now their husks lay here, murderers enshrined. But what crimes could we find in an old crypt as the Elder God had hinted, we wonder? The Saraphan were long extinct. And under whose orders did Dumas' muscle guard the tomb? To the left of the circular park room, we climb the rocky ridge and find, nestled in the mountain, a secret warp gate. Looking closer at the stone mural, we see it depicts the Saraphan's ferocious leader and the ex-guardian of conflict, Malik. Brutal and ruthless in life, supposedly until he met his untimely end by the hands of Cain in Blood Omen. Now, it should quickly be noted, something I missed in Malik's fight in Blood Omen is that when he unleashed a powerful wave of rolling death, Cain wasn't just going to escape via teleport. But the blast was meant to be so powerful, it would take out Malik's fortress in his last ditch effort to destroy Kane. Shifting to the spectral plane, we find the room lined with orbs of eldritch energy aplenty, though. Thankfully, Malik's spirit does not linger. As we enter the grating behind the stone slab, the Elder God solemnly warns. Take heed, Raziel. A forgotten history lies within. Know thyself, though it may destroy you. Finding no immediate threat bar the semi-sentient slew of spirits to be severed and consumed. <laughs> 
We then re-enter the physical plane and are ambushed by the growingly agitated Doomahim. Their efforts to impede our path belies a sacrilegious secret we no doubt draw nearer to. Finally, finding the end of the wretched hall, we descend to the tomb below, musing. As I pulled the stone free, a sigh of sepulchral air escaped the inner chamber. I was not prepared for what lay beyond this threshold. These crypts, defiled caskets of seraphim saints, bearing my brother's names and my own. The irony of Cain's blasphemous act rushed in on me with the crushing force of revelation. Were my hands not as bloody as these? Worse, I had spilled the blood of my brothers, these very comrades whose tombs lay ravaged before me. Yes, Raziel, you were a Seraphan, born of the same force that all but destroyed your race. Before the dawn of the Empire, you were chosen. Cain, Nosgoth's solitary self-declared monarch, plundered this tomb and raised you from these crypts. Breathing his vampiric gift into your defiled corpses, he resurrected you as his favored sons. Learning the unspeakable and baffling truth of our first resurrection, we're left in this desolate tomb, nursing our horrific revelation like a fresh head wound. This is a quick aside for all of you who, like myself, may be interested in the real-world etymology of Cain's ex Saraphan spawn, as understanding the inspiration behind their names unlocks further clues about their lives as Saraphan as well as vampires, and sometimes in their becoming more divine. Starting with Zephon. The name Zephon translates to a looking out. In biblical mythology, Zephon was a cherub and guardian prince of paradise, who was sent by Gabriel and Ithuriel to discover the location of Satan. Instead, Zephon joined Satan's rebellion and was eventually cast out of heaven as a fallen angel after the battle was lost, forever charged with fanning the flames of hell. The reason I am such a fan of the cherub reference is the wiki also states that the bottom left vampire child seen in the start screen is meant to represent Zephon, an amazing biblical tie-in. To be honest, the entire start screen, depicting Raziel and his companions with angelic imagery, falling into a monstrous vampiric visage, is a masterclass of foreshadowing by the developers. And during the development of Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver, Zephon was codenamed Wallcrawler, or simply the Wallcrawler boss, based on his clan's ability to scale walls, of course. Likewise, during the development of Soul Reaver, Melkiah had the codename Skinner, or Skinner Boss, after the fate of his victims. He may have also been previously known as Hema or Rumen, both fallen angels associated with rage and death respectively. Ultimately, Melkiah is described as a fallen angel that serves the blood. Also of note, Melkiah was described as vain and searching for the most stunning specimens to skin. And as a subtle in-joke, the faces stitched together on the evolved Melkiah skin are Crystal Dynamics employees. Malik. The Fasarifan's leader Malik's grave is obviously empty, as we had encountered the Paladin slash Guardian of Conflict in Blood Omen, where we learned, post his defeat by the hands of Vorador, his soul was fixed to his armor and his remains left hanging thanks to Mortanius. During Blood Omen's development, Malik was initially named Guillaume, the French equivalent of William. The name William derives from Germanic roots meaning will or desire, 
and helmet slash protection. Highlighting the character's role as the timeless defender of the Circle of Nine, it is possible he underwent a rename to Malik to avert duplication with William the Just, the true identity of the nemesis. Malik itself is a derivative of the Arabic Malik, meaning king or chieftain, which may relate to his role as the highest ranking member of the Sarafan Brotherhood. Gustav Davidson's A Dictionary of Angels, including the Fallen Angels, states that Malik slash Malek is a guardian angel of hell in Islamic mythology, who told the wicked that they must remain in hell forever because they abhorred the truth and when the truth was brought to them. Curiously, Malik's title in Blood Omen was Paladin. The term Paladin is derived from the Italian Paladino and the late Latin Palatinus, and was used to refer to the foremost warriors of Charlemagne's court. Through its usage in Dungeons and Dragons, it has since been adopted as a general term for archetypical holy knights or warriors. Ward, meanwhile, is an archaic Middle English term for a guard, watchman, or protector. Though, he quite famously failed in that task. <laughs> Call your dogs! They can feast on your corpses! Turel. Terrell, seen on screen from Alpha gameplay, will not be encountered in this playthrough, so this is technically not a spoiler, as he'd been removed and so had the smokestack area of the game, as he was once slated to be the penultimate boss of Soul Reaver. Terrell originally was known as Morlock during the early development of Soul Reaver, named after the named after the similarly characterized Morlocks of H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Turel was also previously known as Hema or Rumen, both fallen angels associated with rage and death respectively. The name Turel itself is Hebrew for Rock of God. Duma. Now while I do not wish to give away too much about the two remaining vampire encounters in-game, Duma's name is the Aramaic word for silence, and the character was actually named Duma very early in the production of Soul Reaver before receiving an H for the final game. Gustav Davidson's A Dictionary of Angels Including the Fallen Angels describes Duma as a figure in biblical mythology, the angel of silence and the stillness of death, prince of hell and angel of vindication. The same work cites his description in the Zohar, chief of demons in Gehinom with 12,000 myriads of attendants, all charged with the punishment of the souls of sinners. Now this is a slight spoiler, however, something to note for later. Duma was informally codenamed Ronin, or the Ronin Boss, by Soul Reaver programming staff. In feudal Japan, Ronin were leaderless, disgraced samurai whose masters had either perished or disowned them. These aspects are reflected in both Duma's art design and the fate of his clan in the story, although we've obviously yet to discover the mystery of the seemingly scattered and leaderless Duma him. Speaking of which, Rahab. During development of Soul Reaver, Rahab had the codename Aluka or Aluka Boss. Aluka being Hebrew for leech, a term that has been used to describe mythical vampires in general. In biblical mythology, Rahab was prince of the primordial sea. Rahab was also the name of a prostitute in the Bible, but the wiki goes into pains to explain that doesn't mean Edos used this as a building block for Rahab's character. Though, we'll save judgment for when we meet him. And finally, we come to the first of Cain's reborn lieutenants, Raziel. In real world theology, Raziel is an archangel within the teachings of Jewish mysticism, who is the keeper of secrets and the angel of mysteries. This matches perfectly with his clan's symbols and the bones of his wings that look like a question mark. The name translates appropriately as Secret of God. Before we exit the tomb, we then pause, sensing lingering spiritual energies. And as we shift to the spectral realm, we fall. Contending with the slur in this antechamber, we find ourselves at grating and phase through, leaping to a platform girt by water and guarded by a lingering vampiric wraith. Oh, 
Once dispatched, we phase back to the physical realm to find we are not alone. Heretic, you shall not pass. Such loyalty to one who has you guarding this outpost like a chained dog. Do you prosper on the scraps he casts you? Your insults will do nothing to blunt the agonies of your demise. Cain killed me once. Behold the result. I have no more to fear from you. The Tomb Guardian then unleashes wave after wave of psychic energies, and we recognize it as a senior revived Turulim. Turel's clan are our most dangerous foes yet, utterly obliterated in a full frontal assault. And as we regain our strength, we think about our surroundings and are forced to ponder an alternate strategy. With Turel's minions sapping our life force, we attempt to use a force wave to knock him off the platform and into the caustic waters below. However, he survives the assault, and no matter how much we try, a physical barrage does little, forcing us to deplete the last of our eldritch energy in a last-ditch effort at conquering this unique foe. This relic has infused you with the power to compress and manipulate space. As your symbiotic weapon, the Soul Reaver is also thus enhanced. You may focus and project an orb of kinetic energy to strike objects that are otherwise beyond your reach. Now, with our new power, we deftly unleash a telekinetic force projectile at the wall, unlocking the tomb door. Exiting, we're then promptly set upon by a Doomahim Guardian. As we scale the wall towards the exit, we realize our new ability can perhaps take care of the heavy lifting for us, literally. Back at the Corrupted Pillars, a grateful Ariel guides. North of the Seraphon tomb, a desecrated abbey languishes, half drowned. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest Soul Reaver videos. And if you want to support the channel in a more personal way, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, Traveller.